This is Twit. Let's talk a little bit about your employment with Sun Microsystems. So I, I know there's an entire generation of Twit viewers who may only know Sun Microsystems in passing, but when the internet was really developing and when Silicon Valley was really coming into its own, Sun Microsystems was a beacon. They used to have a slogan, we put the dot in, in dot com. They right. were the powerful workstations that everyone wanted to use. They had the software that was the most stable, the, the most business oriented. They, they were really a, a futuristic company at a time where we didn't understand how the future would lead to the internet. What was the start of your involvement with Sun? So personal or professional? Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> That's right. Um, so let's start with the professional side. So uh, in 1994, I started working at Sun Microsystems in the North Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. And I was the first district sales support representative for the commercial business. So that meant I made copies and I assembled presentations and made sure the coffee pot was always filled. But it was any foot that I could get in the door to this incredible company that was blazing the trail forward for what eventually people would understand as the World Wide Web, right? And its application and, and, and its underpinnings from a technology standpoint. Um, I very quickly moved up the ranks into the sales organization and uh, was working, you know, building systems for the military and for NASDAQ and and all that kind of great stuff and working in the channels organization and did that for a number of years. And then at one meeting, uh, one internal sales meeting, I watched Bill Joy stand on stage and demonstrate a brand new technology called Genie. And the idea behind Genie was that you could take any device and plug it into a network and it would identify its capabilities to any other device on that network and you'd be able to use it. So for example, if a printer was suddenly plugged into the network, every computer would see it as a device that prints on paper and it prints at this resolution and it's full color. You didn't need to know that it was an HP, whatchamacallit, or a Panasonic you know, thingamajig. So no drivers, everything instantly talking to each other. So being a gamer, what's the first thought I had? If I could plug a Sega Saturn and a PlayStation into the same network, I could double the market for a developer. So I literally jotted down these original thoughts in a Palm Pilot, which I still have. <laughs> and uh, you know, during one of the breaks, I made a beeline down to find John Gage, who was the chief science officer at the time, and is also the person who is credited with coming with the tagline that network is the computer and started rapidly explaining why this would be so important. And it was from that original presentation, that original thought that I started putting together a business plan and a strategy for Sun Microsystems to go pursue the games industry. And I shopped that for two years inside of the company to no avail, right? Because as you pointed out, we were the dot and dot com and 89 or 90% of the world's internet traffic went through Sun computers and we couldn't make them fast enough uh, for the orders that were coming in. So nobody wanted to talk about video games and this crazy kid from the sales organization. And after two years, I promise I'm wrapping this part of the story up. After two years, I was listening one day to Scott McNeely uh, doing his Sun W radio show every month that would be broadcast, right, through our broadcast or stream to our desktop machines. And he was talking to one of our incredible chip engineers, Mark Tremblay, about the magic processor and when are we going to see this in a sega machine or a playstation machine and it was the only time in my career where i ever picked up all my stuff at 11 o'clock in the morning and walked out of the office because i was so frustrated that nobody would listen to what i was trying to say they're asking about these game systems two years after i had been trying to get people to listen so i did the hail mary play the next day and wrote scott this three paragraph long email and sent him a bunch of materials. And a few weeks later, he called me at my desk and he said, I understand you want to talk about video games. What's what's going on? Here's what we're thinking. And I said, no offense, Scott, but the strategy is entirely wrong. Ooh. And I remember the engineer, Neil, sitting next to me in the, in the cube next to me. And he stands up and he goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm going to be fired. <laughs> and to Scott's credit, he said, you know, why do you think it's the wrong strategy? 
And I spent 30 minutes on the phone with him. Three weeks later, I was at corporate to focus on video games for Sun Microsystems.